According to the Federal Highway Administration, motorists encounter an active work zone in one out of every 100 miles driven on our nation's highways. In urban areas, the number of work zones can be higher. Since pedestrians are more vulnerable than motorists, it becomes necessary to create safe, temporary pedestrian access routes to channel the public away from work area hazards. Providing safe pedestrian access through work zones can be difficult under normal circumstances, but when the person trying to navigate them has a physical disability, providing safe access becomes even more challenging. With all this work comes great responsibility to keep that traveling public and the construction workers safe in those work zones while those improvements are being made. Construction activities either impact or close sidewalks, so it's critical that pedestrians be safely directed around the construction. Of particular concern are children, uh, elderly individuals, and people with disabilities. If the sidewalk is impacted by construction, federal and state regulations require that we maintain that ADA-compliant pedestrian access while those improvements are going on. The challenge is determining the safest, most effective way to address the needs of individuals with vision and mobility impairments and other disabilities. This is why, on June 8, 2011, a highly successful Temporary Accessible Pedestrian Route demonstration, also known as a TAPR demonstration, was conducted in Sacramento, California. This demonstration involved a variety of state departments of transportation, industry experts, community volunteers with visual and mobility disabilities, roadway safety product manufacturers, and other stakeholders, including the Federal Highway Administration, and was conducted to examine the issues of accessibility, to evaluate roadway safety products, and to ultimately find solutions. The goal of the event was to gather information, evaluate and document best practices and user input to develop guidance designed to assist engineers nationwide in the design and implementation of safer urban work zones for pedestrians with disabilities. This video is a brief introduction to the guide. The guide is intended to be used in conjunction with the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the Americans with Disabilities Act to provide additional consideration for highway engineers and the highway safety industry. The ADA is a civil rights law that, that masquerades as a building code. The reason why we have uh, discrimination is not because of people's attitudes, but because of the built environment. So that's why this, this particular civil rights law masquerades as a building code when it's really ultimately a civil rights law. If you go at a bus stop, pedestrians don't arrive at bus stops by helicopter. They don't drop out of the sky. Every pedestrian route, including temporary routes, must be accessible to all. It's the law. This means designing and implementing routes that address the needs of the elderly, injured, blind, vision impaired, hearing impaired, mobility impaired, wheelchair users, and the disabled. The biggest difficulties we have are, are being able to get this, the same information about a closure of a sidewalk or the, um, the closure of a construction zone area uh, to all users. And so we can't just use a sign, we can't just use tape with barricades like, like we have in the past, is that we need to be able to communicate that closure to people who maybe have uh, impaired sight or impaired hearing or other disabilities. Communicating with pedestrians in work zones is a challenging issue. For example, to assist the visually impaired community, there should be audible alerts, as well as clear barricades and pathways. The requirements of other groups of pedestrians, such as those in wheelchairs, walkers, or those on cane, may not be the same. The challenge is to accommodate the needs of all the groups simultaneously, so that all individuals are safe and can clearly identify the temporary access paths around the work zone. It's been a real eye-opener for me to just get some of the issues that people with vision impairments deal with. They have different needs than, than the rest of us do. And some of the things we've done, like putting curb ramps, uh, you know, takes away the queue that they've used for years to know where the edge of the street is. And so that's, you know, that's the reason why we need to have the detectable warning requirements is because that basically replaces the curb that we, you know, as wheelchair users said, you know, we need to get rid of this curb so we can get off the sidewalk. So 
Um, <laughs> the relationship between the disabilities, sometimes, you know, you improve the situation for one person, then you, you make the situation worse for another group. But it can go yellow, whatever tape you want. Because the yellow can be more visible to people with vision impairments. Right. The type of safety issues I face in a work construction setting are not knowing of its presence until I get there. Uh, when I get there, to know what am I to do is, can I go through the construction site or do I have to reverse and go back to the nearest intersection and cross over? And then if I go, if I'm allowed to go to the construction site, is it, um, is it a passageway with barriers that are, um, that, that I can safely uh, touch without sharp edges? Uh, and are they rigid so that they will uh, support me if I hit them at a fast uh, speed? I like this guide strip. Because that tells you what directions you want, you want to go and then you, you're able to turn left here. It, it, it tells you exactly what you need to know instead of um, you don't have to guess at it. I like knowing that I'm, I'm on the right track, that I'm going straight across with the crosswalk. A lot of times you get the uh, uh, the curb ramp off of the sidewalk into the into the alternate route, and then they don't put a ramp back onto the sidewalk to get uh, to get off of the alternate route, which is happens a lot. So, and another one that happens uh, quite a bit is just not delineating it very well, which is what we were doing today was trying to to help with the with the delineation. A lot of times they'll put up, you know, a barricade and then a big space and then another barricade. And sure, visually it shows you the direction, but if you're a blind pedestrian, you wouldn't be able to, you know, know that you're supposed to fill in the gaps yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> Middle to the side. Well, That's just my to be symmetrical, we put it in the middle, but Certainly. actually, to be practical. Yeah, you want it on the side because you don't want somebody to trip over it in the center and how it's uneven, kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Color contrast is very important on any kind of a, a device that's going to alert me to a traffic hazard or construction area. Um, it, it, the bright colors are very important. I, I go by color contrast because I cannot see detail. The type of safety issues I face would be temporary ramps that A, are too steep, B, are not stable but wobble, C, they often have not an adequate side guardrail to hold on to, or they don't also have bottom barrier protection, which when it's rainy and there's mud flowing across, then that ramp can be slippery. And due to my lack of muscle, if I slip, I will fall and could easily break a leg or hip or something else. So those are some of the factors. Products that are here for the barriers um, are far superior to what, the, what I've seen out in the environment. Uh, my life. Usually they are uh, consist of two by fours and plywood uh, with exposed nails, uh, jagged edges, no information to tell you what to do. Uh, there's a lot of ambient noise around, so it's even disorienting. I like that barrier thing over there, the barrier where um, you can walk along and um, it gets you out of the construction zone. That's awesome. We need more of those because construction is really, really, really difficult. Without a safe kind of zone like that, a safe area to, to walk through, it's really frightening. The challenges to providing accessible routes are numerous. To successfully meet these challenges, engineers and manufacturers must consider everything from communicating the change to the community to providing appropriately designed channelizing devices, pathways, curb ramps, sidewalks, signals, grades, and surfaces. Just getting people to put pedestrian traffic control down at all is a struggle. I wish they would keep in mind that there's a need for them. It's, and that, uh, yes, they may take more time to set up, they may be more expensive, but in the long run, they, they provide greater safety for the individual, the ADA person, and the general public. At the same time, 
reduces litigation for the, the contractor who's doing the work, putting them in that they know they have something safe that, and, and it will protect them. The maintenance of traffic, traffic control flights isn't just to get the vehicles around the work effort and the construction hazards. It's also, there are other modes of transport, bicyclists, pedestrians, public transit. I mean, where, how do you set up a bus stop that might be in the middle of a five mile long uh, work zone? How do you set up the, those established stops and, and get people to the bus stop and then safety on and off the bus as well? So there's other, other issues other than just getting the cars in front of you. The goal of the temporary accessible pedestrian route demonstration was to critically evaluate the products and services available and to learn firsthand from the people who need assistance. It was also beneficial for manufacturers to understand how their products are utilized and, if needed, make improvements. I am so glad this is happening. We need to see more of events like this because this is going to be helpful for everybody. Not, not only the users, the customers, people with disabilities, but also to the, to the transportation agencies, the DOTs, and then the contractors. We'll, we can all learn from that. To learn from this so that we don't end up with the, the practicing the law of unintended consequences, where we're doing something without actually realizing that we need to look at it from their perspective also. Events like this are invaluable, to actually have actual users and to be able to watch the way they interact with your products and, and the setups that we're, we're doing. It's invaluable for our R&D efforts for developing new products as well as uh, redesigning our existing product lines. One of the challenges in manufacturing a product is to make it fit the need while still make it functional and, and cost effective. So we don't want to overbuild it and make it too bulky because then the contractors won't want to use it. You need a product or products that can be very easy to use and, and put out for, you know, for an hour or for, for a week. Um, whereas, you know, I, I've seen a lot of traffic uh, situations where they have a couple of cones put out with workers working on the highway because, you know, it, it is probably more, more of a challenge to put something that was safer out there. So, uh, you know, to me, that's quite a hazardous uh, situation. They typically tell designers that, given all the math and science we have, interpretations of various laws and, and what they mean, that probably the biggest thing, that, that, that the most important thing that they can use is common sense. If you're, in, if you're doing work in an area that's going to generate pedestrian traffic, you can assume that someone with some sort of disability is going to utilize that, and it's that simple. Providing safe, efficient, temporary accessible routes for all pedestrians is a fundamental right. It is also the law. To learn more about how to create safer, more accessible routes, please obtain a free copy of the ADA guidance document by visiting these websites, atsa.com, or workzonesafety.org.